once I've updated to the new version of Safari, uh, when I open it up, the first thing you're gonna see uh, is a brand new what they call start page. Start page is designed to be kind of like the jumping off point that you would use to go from one site to the next. And this page is organized into your favorites that you have maybe bookmarked in your favorite bar, sites you frequently visit, uh, and then over here in the bottom right hand corner, I have some little options that I can use to adjust. And in these options, I can choose whether or not I want the privacy report, which tells me which websites have been tracking me at the same time. I can get Siri suggestions on different websites that Siri thinks I might be interested in since I seem to view certain things a lot. Uh, and a reading list, which is just a way to save things to be able to read later. You also have the ability to add a background image, which has a few different background images to choose from, or you can hit the plus sign and simply add your own. The cool thing here is there's an option that says use start page on all devices, and this uses iCloud. So if I have this uh, checked, then the start page that I have set here will automatically come over to any device signed into that app, same Apple ID, uh, for example, your iPad. So you have the same options, no matter if you're using Safari on the Mac or the iPad, makes it easier to find things that you view a lot. Now, the other thing you probably noticed here um, is the user interface has changed um, quite a bit. Things just look different. So if I open up a website, for example, um, the toolbar up here at the top now takes on the color of whatever website that it is that I'm viewing. So for example, if I am in Canvas, uh, I now see a green dash bar up here because that's what Canvas uses for their site. Um, the other thing that changed as far as user interface goes has to do with the way it handles tabs. So if I hit the plus sign to add a new tab, it will do that. It takes me right to the start page with that tab and I can simply click or jump into a specific website. And this is what it, the way tabs look. They automatically resize to fill your entire page. Uh, and I can add as many tabs as I want and they will automatically resize themselves to adjust. And now they're no longer tabs, they're more like buttons. Now, my favorite feature of the new uh, version of Safari has to do with tabs. Um, and this has to do with what they call uh, either tab view or tab groups. So I have three tabs open here and I know some people like to have multiple tabs open and you may be a 50, 60 tab person, and that's fine. Uh, Safari actually does a better job of handling multiple tabs uh, and making your internet not bogged down when you have multiple tabs open at once. But if I simply tap on this little tab overview button in the corner, this will now show me all of my tabs as little tiles to pick and choose which one I wanna jump to. Makes it easier than trying to translate which of the little uh, G Google tab icons is for the right one that I was in. The other thing I can do here with tabs has to do with what's called my sidebar. So over here on the left, I have a show sidebar button. And when I turn that sidebar on, this will show me I have three tabs open. Now, what I can do here is I can choose this plus sign to create a new tab group. So let's say, for example, uh, I was doing a research project and maybe I'm researching American Revolution. And so I'm gonna go and I have a website here and then maybe I'll add a new tab and I'll just do a Google search on American Revolution and a couple other websites that I wanna check out here. Maybe I'm gonna command click on this to open it in a new tab uh, or maybe right click on a link and tell it to open it in a new tab. And so I have a bunch of information here all related to the same topic that I wanna be able to save, but go back and look at later. So what I can do here is it tells me I have four tabs open. If I tap this little button in my sidebar, I can create what's called a new tab group with those tabs. And when I do that, it creates essentially like a bookmark folder or a bookmark set of these websites that I can go back and visit at any time. So I'm gonna call this American Revolution Project because these are sites that I'm gonna to wanna to check out whenever I'm working on my American Revolution Project. So if I am done, I can simply close these and now I can do whatever I want on the internet. I can jump from 
from site to site. If I find this website and I want to add this to a tab group, I can simply right click on that tab and I can say move to tab group and go ahead and add it to uh, that tab group as well. So I can simply have as many different tabs as I want. I can jump back to my start page, go back into whatever it is that I'm working on, and then at any point in time, if I wanted to get back to those tabs, I can simply activate my sidebar over here and tap on that tab group and it'll open up all four of those tabs that I had saved right here for me to be able to, uh, to view. The really, again, cool thing about tab groups is they are also synced per device. So once you've updated your iPad to iPad OS 15 and Safari to Safari 15, then you get the same tab group features. You'll look for the same button in Safari and any tabs that you bookmarked or grouped in one uh, will automatically show up on the other device. So you can set things up on your computer to be able to teach with on your iPad or so on. Those are the changes in the new version of Safari for the Mac.